module. Uh, this fourth module, we are discussing different aspect of the functions of random variable. We have discussed earlier that uh, functions of random variable or itself is random variable. And so far in this module, we have uh, discussed about the different method to know the uh, probability distribution function of the functions of random variable. So now if we call that the functions of random variable as a derived uh, variable, then the how to get their uh, properties, their characteristics of uh, different um, uh, probabilities that is probability density function and they are after that there are different uh, properties of those uh, random variable, those derived random variable that we have discussed. Now, in this lecture, what we will discuss is the expectation and moments of the random variable. So, this expectation and moments of the functions of random variable, why it is needed is that sometimes when uh, even though we have discussed uh, different methods uh, of this uh, to derive this uh, derived random variable, but it may not be always, uh, always possible to get a close form uh, solution for uh, this kind of derived random variables to get their PDF. Now it is true that if we get their direct PDF that is a probability uh, density function then all other properties for example their mean, their variance, their uh, skewness everything we can uh, obtain from that uh, PDF or that distribution function. But sometimes uh, it has been found that this may not be possible or the, that is uh, computationally not viable to get that PDF. So in such cases, if uh, we can get the moments or the expectation of the sum uh, in initial moments of the, of the derived random variable, then that is uh, will be very useful without knowing its, uh, its, uh, its probability density function, the form of its probability density uh, function. So the theme of this theme of today's lecture is that we will find out that how to get the expectation and uh, moments directly without having its uh, PDF probability density function. So this le lecture what we will uh, do that we will do that expectation and moments of this uh, functions of random variable. And so uh, before we do what we are doing is that in this module we are so there is one uh, uh, original random variable and we have uh, seen that this original random variable can have uh, its some functional correspondence to another uh, another uh, um, variable and that variable is also a random variable. So this functions of this random variable itself is, is another uh, random variable which we are calling now uh, a derived random variable. Now there are so far in this module as I just now I told that uh, for this uh, uh, random variable, for this derived random variable we have discussed um, different methods uh, based on the fundamental theorem that we discussed in this second lecture that how to get their PDF. So if we but sometimes uh, it may not be uh, computationally feasible to get that uh, direct the distribution function. So what is our uh, uh, is our interest uh, in today's lecture is that we will know that how to get their uh, expectation their moments or if we get their moment generating function then uh, uh, then it will be easy to get that uh, uh, or almost the complete description of that uh, random variable or the properties of that derived random variable will be known to us. Uh, uh, so, we will take one after an, an another, may, maybe the expectation moments we will take first and then we will uh, go for this moment generating function. So, uh, today's uh, lecture we will first discuss about the expectation means these are all the uh, for the functions of the random variable that is the derived uh, random variables, the expectation of a function of random variable, moments of the functions of random variable, their means once we know that, that moments then we can obtain their mean, their variance, then we will know the what are the different properties of that expectation and then also we will know the mean and variance of a linear, fu linear function. So linear functions are mostly applicable to many practical problems, so the specially we will see that uh, for a linear, fu linear function. Uh, what its uh, mean and uh, mean and is the expression for the mean and variance uh, relating to the mean and variance of the original uh, random uh, random variable. 
so uh, this method as i discussed that this method why these things are useful that is the getting the expectation moments and or the moment generating function itself why it is useful is that the standard procedure that so far we have discussed in this in this uh, module that can be followed to obtain uh, obtain the moments and expectation from the uh, probability distribution functions of the random variable as described in the earlier earlier lecture so we have seen that what is the fundamental theorem and based on some specific assumption what are the different methods to uh, to get uh, the get the probability uh, distribution uh, function and from that pdf we can get these moments and expectation or whatever the different uh, properties that we need for this uh, this function sub random variable which is the derived random random variable however uh, even the different methods to obtain the PDF of the functions of random variable is uh, described, it may not be always easy task to obtain the same. And this is in particular when we see that uh, when this transformation or when this function is uh, non-linear or uh, um, as we have discussed earlier that when the function is having more than one root. Uh, or more than one, one root for the new random variable. So, that time it is uh, sometime it may not be that easy to find out the uh, subset of the x for a specific value of the y that is a function of that x. So, uh, that time uh, uh, so uh, special care is needed and so we have to first of all find out that y itself may become difficult so that uh, based on that only we can uh, go for uh, that uh, other other analysis so so as it is as it is not uh, always easy so in in such cases the information of this moments and that um, information of the moments of the derived variable are very useful so even though i uh, mention here that uh, particularly in the case of when the uh, when the function is non linear uh, that time the generally the root uh, of the uh, of the function is more than one and that time it creates the problem but here we we'll, we can also show that if the if the function is in case of the function is linear also then if the if we are interested to know some some moments say the first moment or the second moment or the first order or second order statistics if it is only of our in interest if we don't if, if that the complete description of the uh, pdf is not that necessary then also we can show that if we follow this methodology then it will be much easier in case of the linear i am talking in 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 specific it will it will be much easier to get those uh, uh, get those statistics first or second order statistics through this uh, direct method so uh, without knowing that pdf in case of both linear as well as non-linear uh, non uh, functions of random variable it will be e easier for for non-linear uh, function it will be easier to get this one and for the linear function also if the only few statistics are our intention then uh, this uh, method will be a uh, much more easier compared to the getting the full pdf and then getting the uh, statistics so uh, so uh, in this case in this ca uh, cases where uh, we uh, we are interested for some moment or the uh, the pdf is not that easily obtainable so information of the moments of the derived variable are very are very useful So, the general expression of this expectation of a function we have discussed uh, earlier and you know that for a single uh, random variable, uh, how to get that uh, expectation of a random variable that we have discussed earlier as well and we will also just show it here for this uh, for this discrete random variable, you know that expectation of a random variable x is the is the summation of the xi multiplied by px xi so if this is the this is the sum, summation so uh, this we have de, uh, discussed that if this is a if x is a discrete random variable then the probability for a uh, for a particular value multiplied by that value and summation of all this uh, all such possible outcome of that discrete random variable gives you the expectation of that particular uh, random variable 
Now, similarly, if we just extend this one, this property uh, that for the for the functions as well. Uh, so, uh, if the function is say that y is equals to g x, so this is the functional form that g of x is the functional form. Then, uh, then to to know that what is the what is the mean or what is the expectation of this function that is g x, that also can be obtained by uh, this simply replacement of this x and this one in in terms of this g x. So, expectation of this g x that is the uh, function of this random variable. Obviously, we are talking about the discrete one, discrete random variable in this case. That will be the summation of this, the value of that function at those uh, specific uh, points, those specific uh, feasible outcome of this random variable that is x i s multiplied by their probabilities will, and summation of for this all such x i will give you the expectation of this g x. One thing here I want to mention that whatever the whatever the theory that is the function of this random variable that we are discussing in this lecture, it can be uh, extended to uh, to the uh, to the to the function of the more than one random uh, random variable. But this specific lecture, what we are discussing, we are discussing only for the single random variable. So the function and their functional properties that we are discussing throughout this module, not only this lecture, throughout this module, we are discussing with respect to the single random variable. So this the same or the or the or the equivalent theory is, is, is exists for this more than one random variable, which uh, will be discussed under. The in in the next module, which is under the multiple random variable, there we will see that the same thing, the expectation ag again on their uh, moments of this one. If the if the function is based on the more than one random random variable, what will happen? But the basic principle that we are discussing in this lecture will remain same in in those cases as well. So. Here, so uh, here, what we have shown that these are the so these things earlier we know that for a discrete random variable, and this is for that function of a of that discrete random variable. If the function is g x, then their expectation can be expressed through this uh, form. Now, in case of this, so this is we got the sum summation because this is a discrete random variable. Now, if this random variable is continuous, then the expectation of the function of uh, <coughs> this uh, continuous random variable so for a uh, for a continuous random variable uh, x is given by this will be x so is given by this we discussed earlier as well that is expectation of x is that the multiplication of that that variable that is x multiplied by its pdf that is fx sub x dx and that is integrated over the entire support that is minus infinity to plus infinity. So, if we get this form then, then this is nothing but the expectation and also um, we have discussed in the earlier lecture that this expectation is the moment with respect to the origin and we have shown that uh, the analogy of the of the area in the earlier, earlier lecture that this expectation can be uh, analogically said that this is where the distance of this the uh, cg of the area this area means here the area uh, under this curve that is the under this pdf so it gives the location of the location of the mean so this is the expectation of that uh, that random variable x now again here similar to the um, uh, to the discrete random variable if we replace this x with its function that is y is equals to gx if a, if a new uh, random variable that is the y which is equals to the g of x then uh, we can directly get the expectation of this y that is g x in this form that is expectation of g x is equals to that this g x multiplied by the pdf of that random variable x and that integration from the over the entire support of this pdf that is minus infinity to plus infinity. So, uh, now there are some, some properties of this expectation, some of them we have discussed are, are earlier also and now we will discuss with uh, particularly in the view of these functions, functions of this random variable. Now, this if this h x is equals to x that is function itself is only the x that we know that in case this case we have discussed earlier that this expectation is the mean of the variable. Now, this mean of the variable means this is the distance from the origin where the CG 
of the area under that PDF is located. So that distance, that is the distance from the origin to the CG of this uh, of the um, of the curve, uh, CG of the area under the curve is the distance is the lo is the location, and that gives you the mean of that random variable. So here the here we can say that function itself is equals to x. Now if we so this thing can be generalized to the any functional form any. A, uh, any functional form and that we, we can see that how the properties are uh, varying here. So earlier we have discussed that if for the expectation of, uh, of a function which is a constant, uh, constant with respect to that, uh, that random variable. So if this is a constant then we know that expectation of any constant is equals to the, uh, is equals to the that constant that is here the um, expectation of uh, A is equals to A if A is constant. Now, if the function is hx and if the hx is, is multiplied by a, a scalar quantity by a constant that is a, so, so then after multiplying that uh, constant with that functional form, if we want to know what is its expectation, then this expectation can be expressed as that, that, that constant multiplied by the expectation of the hx. This can be easily followed from that uh, particular form of this equation what we have discussed here now. So here what we are doing actually is that this gx is, is multiplied by a scalar quantity of this a. So the expectation of a gx. So in place of this gx we have to write that a multiplied by gx. Now as this a is constant that can be easily taken out of this integration and the remaining what is there inside the integration is nothing but the expectation of gx. So that constant, so that constant can be taken out of this uh, expectation. So that is why it says that expectation of the, of the function multiplied by a constant is equals to the constant multiplied by the expectation of that uh, function. Similarly, if there are if there are two two functions like, like this h1x and h2x and both are multiplied by some constant a and here it is b, then uh, first of all these two can be separated so that if it is the so this is the additive uh, rule so this the this can be exp uh, expressed that this expectation of a multiplied by h1x plus expectation of b multiplied by h2x and again following the earlier rule that is that constant can be taken out. So finally, the form takes that a multiplied by expectation of h1x plus b multiplied by expectation of h2x for two, con two constant here, the a and b. Uh, but one thing that is also Im important that is the expectation of the operator and the functions of the random variable do not commute. That means, so as, as it is the constant that we can take out of this, uh, uh, this expectation, but the for the functional form that is the expectation of g of x is not equal to that function the same functional form for the expectation of x. So these two things are not equal this is quite obvious if you just fit these two side to that to that um, to that um, expression that we discussed in the in the earlier slide. So it can be easily shown that these two cases are not equal to each other. Now if we take a small example and uh, we have taken this example and we will show that how the two different way we can get that, uh, get that, um, uh, that mean. So this is, a, this is a discrete random variable and this uh, random variable that we are talking here is x and this is having the PMA probability mass function is equals to uh, 1 by 3 for there are 3 uh, possible outcome that is x equals to minus 1, 0 and, and 1. So uh, these are all equip, so there are 3 possible outcome and all these 3 uh, outcomes are e uh, means, uh, equally possible. So find the mean of the function y equals to x square. So in the earlier lecture now what we can say that in the earlier lecture generally we have concentrated what is the PDF of this y and that PDF for this one, this kind of relationship where it is a square. Mm. We have also discussed in the previous lecture that there will be some two roots for a specific value of y and uh, here as it is, that is a discrete value and you can see that this is symmetric over this 0, 
uh, 0 that is minus 1 and plus 1. So, here also for uh, for a specific value of y that is 1 there will be 2 roots that is minus 1 and plus 1 and we, we know that how to get that um, uh, get that a, a expression in the, from the from the earlier lecture. So, here if we see that here if we see that so this is the uh, the, this is the axis where we are showing that y and this is your say uh, minus 1, this is your say 0 and this is your say 1. So, these are the three possible outcome and everywhere the uh, probability is just shown a, a here which is your. So, uh, these are all uh, 1 by 3. Now, we are taking another fun uh, another uh, functional form that uh, we have uh, seen that y is equals to x square. Now, if we just put it here that is this one is your y, then we know that for the uh, so uh, as it is a square, so this y is not ne ne negative now for that x equals to both that 1 and minus 1, the y is equals to your 1 and for x equals to 0, y is taking uh, a value that is that is 0. Now, if I want, if I follow that our earlier thing that I will first find out what is the PDF of this uh, y or the sorry the PMF as it is a discrete random variable. So, uh, what is the PMF of that y and then from that PMF I will calculate what is its mean. So, uh, what are the possible outcomes? So, y equals to some value we will get for, uh, for y equals to 0 and for and for y equals to uh, for y equals to 1. So, uh, so we have seen that for y equals to 0 the possible set of x that can take is only 0 and at x equals to 0 the probability is 1 by 3 and uh, for y equals to 1 the possible set of this x is 1 and minus 1 both and their probability mass for x equals to 1 is 1 by 3 and for uh, x equals to minus 1 is also 1 by 3. So, now if we take uh, these two and put it uh, there that for the outcome y equals to 1, so we have to just add them so that y equals to 2 by 3 for y equals to 1. So, this is the complete definition for the PMF of this y. Now, if I want to know what is the mean of this y, you know that this mean for a discrete random variable should be uh, equals to your that possible outcome that is the y multiplied this 0 multiplied by its uh, probability mass plus this outcome multiplied by its probability mass 2 by 3 which is equals to 2 by 3. So, this is that uh, technique and if we want to know that direct if we, so without knowing so here in this lecture what we are doing there I do not want to know what is this distribution I just I am just interested to the mean of this y. So, this is what we have di uh, discussed so far that we can directly uh, write that that functional uh, form that is g x i multiplied by that your uh, that your p x of x i and this if we uh, add it up for all x i then what we will get is equals to your expectation of y that is the mean of y. So, from this one whether we can get that what is shown in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, problem. So, what we have shown that now directly if I want to know what is its mean then uh, what we will get that uh, expectation of y is e equals to the summation that is g x i of f, f x i. So, this will be p x i actually as it is a pmf. So, but here we have used f x that is why this notation is used. So, so fine. So, here that g x i now the a x i can take the all, all x i means here the x i is minus 1, 0 and 1. So, we are just putting that g x i that is y equal to x square. So, minus 1 square at that point what is the probability mass that is 1 by 3. Then 0 square 1 by 3 and 1 square 1 by 3. So, this square is coming from this functional uh, functional form that is the g x i is equal to your x i square. So, those squares are shown here. So, if we just get this one you are also getting this. Uh, mean to be 2 by 3. So, from both that uh, thing we have shown that directly without knowing but uh, we, without knowing the PMF of this y we are getting its mean. So, this is what is explained through this very simple uh, problem how we can get the same mean without knowing their PMF. 
similarly if we take another pro uh, another problem but in this case it is a continuous uh, random variable uh, and this problem is taken from uh, the Cotegola and uh, Rosso 2008 now here it is on a variable between the interarrival time or on in interarrival time of two vehicles uh, over a over a highway bridge so suppose that there is a toll station and we are interested to know that uh, basically this is a this kind of problem is used to decide that how many lanes in a in a toll station is is required to optimally handle the traffic volume at that intersection of the road so uh, what we have to know know is that what is the average interval time and um, of the of the vehicles and how many such uh, things are uh, such the lens of this toll is required so the problem states that assume that the inter arrival time that is the x so here the random variable that we are using is your that inter arrival time between two vehicles uh, of a vehicle approaching a toll station of a uh, of a bridge has an exponential PDF with parameter lambda. So this x that interval time following an exponential PDF uh, and the parameter is lambda. So this exponential PDF we have discussed earlier. So we know that what the form that uh, um, uh, form of the PDF it will take for the x. Now there are k toll lines in that toll station. That's the k vehicles can be accommodated at a time now so if this is our now uh, this is our now uh, uh, is concerned that is there are if there are k to to lines that means the k vehicles can be uh, accommodated at a particular time instant so what we have to determine that we want to know that what is the mean arrival time of k vehicles and the coefficient of variation of this arrival time so assume that the ar arrivals are independent to e each other so arrivals are independent to each other means uh, so that uh, means arrival of a particular vehicle at this time instant doesn't have any influence on the arrival of this the arrival of the next uh, um, vehicle to the toll station so this the successive ar ar arrival times are independent to each other now why we are interested to know the mean of this k uh, vehicles is that because at that particular station if there are k to k to lines so there will be k vehicles can be accommodated together so we are interested to know that what is the mean arrival time of the k vehicle at that particular uh, section so so that we will be a, this will be a guidance to determine that uh, k equals to how much should be the optimum for that case because we know that average time taken to uh, to pass through a through a toll station with that experience we can decide that how many such line is needed so what should be the uh, what should be the comfortable number for that k so what we are interested here to know the mean arrival time of the k vehicles now you see the function here that we are talking about this is one is the the first of the original random variable is x now there are k lines so k vehicles can come so that x so this arrival times can be added k times and the new random uh, variable will be obtained and without knowing that pdf i just want to know what is the mean arrival time of that new random uh, new random variable which is the summation of uh, k such x So uh, that is here what is uh, discussed as the interarrival time x follows an exponential distribution the mean and the variance of x are 1 by lambda and 1 by lambda square this we have discussed in the last mo module that if a particular uh, random variable having the uh, exponential distribution with parameter la lambda its mean is 1 by lambda and its variance is 1 by lambda square now the total time for the arrival of the k vehicle if it is denoted by z another random variable then it is uh, straightforward that this z is equals to summation of such x1 x2 up to xk so the summation of, of this uh, random variable so we are getting another new random variable so we have to get what is the mean of this z now if i want to know that mean of this uh, z that can be written that now 
as we have seen that this xi if it is uh, added inside then we know that that uh, can be taken out from that particular property that we have discussed a uh, few slides earlier that is this, this one if there are some uh, random uh, random variable function if we just adding them up then that addition this is the additive rule following this additive rule we can just write that this can be the summation of that uh, the expectation of each random variable starting from 1 to you know, 1 to k. Now we know that expectation of that x because uh, this follows the exponential distribution. So this is 1 by lambda. So uh, this expectation of xi is equals to lambda in lambda inverse. So this lambda inverse should be summed up from i equals to 1 to uh, uh, to k. So there are k such 1 by lambda. So the expectation of z is equals to k by k by lambda. So the mean arrival time of k vehicles to the toll station is k by k by lambda, where the arrival time of one vehicle is equals to one by lambda. Now one interesting point that we will discuss with this, which is also uh, very uh, important for for handling the traffic volume, is this that so the if I now want to know what is the coefficient of variation then we have to calculate what is the variance of the z. Now this variance of the z is again the summation of this uh, uh, this variance of this individual random variable. Now this individual random variable variance is 1 by lambda square and that following the same thing that is it is also become that k by lambda square. Now if I want to know that the variation that is the coefficient of variation that we know that this is the uh, this coefficient of variation of this new random variable that is the z is equals to the s by mu. This s by mu means that s is here the standard deviation which is the square root of the variance of this z and this e z square means that this is the mean and if so this is the mean so we have taken this full square root that means this is the mean. So the s by mu that we have discussed earlier that is the coefficient of variation. So here so variation uh, the variance of this z equals to k, lam k by lambda square and this expectation of z that square is your k square by lambda square. So if this two is resulting that 1 by k square root. Now what happens if k increases? So if k increases, we see that this coefficient of variation decreases. Thus the, thus the variation of the arrival time decreases with the increase of the toll, li toll lines that is k. So why it is important is that now that if we have decided that there at a particular toll station there are k number of toll lines are required then that toll lines if the number of toll lines increases then that coefficient of variation the variation means the variation of the uh, of the total k vehicles approaching to the toll station that variation will decrease as k in increases so that we can say that as we increase it then uh, then the uh, average time that is average interval to approaching to a particular toll line will be almost uh, approaching to almost approaching to uniform because the variation of this total k vehicles the time of uh, um, approaching total k, k vehicles is re reducing so this is what is that uh, for, from what we can uh, conclude from the coefficient of variation of this uh, new random variable z Now the moments of the functions of random variable, uh, again um, that we have discussed this uh, moment uh, with respect to a particular uh, random uh, variable, a single random variable. Here what we are discussing is that their function, so following the same thing from the expectation what you have, what you have shown that from that uh, expectation of x, we have taken it to that expectation of gx. And similarly, here we will take that that same that expectation of a particular uh, uh, variable. We will just see how the for that function. So we can say that this will be the uh, in general. If we want to state, then we will say the what is the rth moment of a particular function. So that will be the power should be there 
is the R. So this is what is, is explained here for both this discrete as well as this is for the continuous. So for the discrete random variable, the in, in general form that is the rth moment of the function of this gx can be expressed at this gx power r multiplied by their pmf and summation of all possible xi. And uh, for the rth moment of the uh, function of the continuous random variable that is gx is given by the expression of this gx power r that is equals to minus infinity to uh, plus infinity that is gx power r multiplied by fx x dx. So, this gx power r, this gx power r is basically is giving you the general form of this rth moment. Now, depending on whether we are interested for the first order or uh, that uh, that first moment or second moment or third moment uh, that we will just will just uh, vary this value of this r. Now, one thing is uh, clear that these are all the moments that we are taking we are taking with respect to the origin that is from the g, from the zero and you know that these moments are important with respect to the origin for the first moment to find out it's the location of the mean now once we have identified the mean generally for the higher order moments we are taking with respect to the mean from the second moment onwards uh, we the our the, the the description of that random variable is important if we take the moment with respect to the mean and we know that variance is the second moment with respect to the mean and we have also discussed that first moment with respect to the mean is zero because we are taking it from the same point where uh, the the first mo uh, where the first moment we got with respect to the origin so here as uh, this this general form of this uh, of this moment we have taken with respect to the origin now uh, we will uh, show that if we take it with respect to that uh, with respect to the uh, with respect to its uh, mean that is we know that now the mean is the first order moment so that expectation of gx is is basically your 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 mean so here again the general form in case of the discrete random variable that is the rth moment of the function with respect to the mean what we have to replace that total function is that gx minus expectation of gx so this is the total mm, form and that power r that is to make it general is equals to the summation of this gxi minus expectation of gx power r multiplied by its, its pmf and this is summing up over all possible xi will give you the moment is the rth moment with respect to mean for that discrete random variable. Similarly, for the continuous uh, um, continuous random variable, uh, if we take then that y is equals to gx uh, is expressed as that expectation of this gx minus that uh, expectation of the that the first order uh, expectation that is the mean so gx minus mean power r and this should be integrated because this is the continuous random variable that is gx minus that mean power r multiplied by its pdf and this integration will give you that rth moment with respect to the mean that is expectation of gx of that function gx. Now, as we have seen that if we want to know the know the variance of that function, then the variance of the function if we want to know, then we know that this is the second order moment with respect to that mean. So, that here that r should be replaced by the 2. So, that variance of a function of that gx is equals to that the second moment with respect to the mean. That is the gxi minus expectation of gx power 2 multiplied by px axi for all a all axi so this one is giving you the variance for that discrete random for the function of the discrete random variable gx now the variance of the continuous function that is y equals to gx a, again we have to uh, put that uh, moment that second order moment we have to take so, gx minus that mean power uh, 2 that is square multiplied by its pdf and taking the integration from the entire support minus infinity to plus infinity will give you the variance of that function gx. 
now using this one if we just want to see a, a specific case of the linear function the linear function here if as uh, as i have started with that this uh, these things what we are discussing we are discussing with respect to a single random variable so we are taking the linear function as uh, the uh, form that uh, y equals to mx plus c so in this form if we just take then we will see that what is its expectation and what is its variance then we will see that even though these are the linear function and in such cases following the one to one transformation assumption that getting the pdf is also uh, uh, also that process we have uh, discussed and the pdf also we can obtain but if we know this form then the getting that if the first moment that is the mean and and the variance is is, is required then following this method this will be much more easier to get what is its mean and what is its variance even though it is a linear function so here what we are taking is a linear function y equals to ax plus b this a and b are the constant here so the uh, the properties of this x is known that is the expectation of x or the variance of x these are all known so now if i want to know that what is the mean value of this one this y then um, that mathematical expectation for this function that is expectation of y is equals to expectation of ax plus b now again following the properties of the expectation that we have followed earlier this can be shown that this should be uh, plus that is the expectation of ax plus expectation of b now as b is constant the expectation of b will be equals to your uh, this uh, direct constant and this constant will be taken out from the expectation so this can be shown uh, that a multiplied by expectation of x plus b and this can also be shown if we just follow that uh, that uh, the continuous uh, mm, moment that is the, con the expression of the moment for the continuous random variable that is this is the functional form of this gx that is ax plus b that multiplied by this pdf dx and integration over entire support from minus infinity to plus infinity see we can break this from the integration rule that this x plus fx dx plus b a b f x d x so there is some mistake here so this will be there will be um, uh, there will be multiplying factor called a here because this a is coming here and in this case there will only be and there will not be any any x okay so this will be the integration from minus infinity plus infinity of the f x d x now integration of this minus infinity to plus infinity of the f x d x we know from the uh, basic uh, um, assumption of this pdf that this the entire integration is equals to 1 so this integration this x is a mistake here so this integration from this minus infinity to plus infinity of the pdf is equals to b multiplied by 1 so this is becoming uh, b so here again this a is multiplied here so this a multiplied by the minus infinity to plus infinity x fx dx so now this x fx dx we know that this is the expectation of x so this is replaced by the expectation of x and this is your a so what we are following again we can see that whatever the properties of the expectation we just shown a few slide back that is this constant can be taken out and expectation of the constant is a constant so following that uh, principle also that expectation of y is equals to the a multiplied by expectation of x plus uh, b similarly for this same linear function if we are if we want to know what is its variance then the variance of y we know that this will be the uh, the second moment with respect to the mean now the second moment with respect to the mean when we are talking about this is so that this is y minus mean of y now this mean of y is the expectation of y that just now we have seen that expectation of y is this so this is a of mu x we can write that this expression of x is the mu x plus b so this is what that mu y is replaced by this a mu x minus b and y is equals to a x plus b now again we can follow this one we can just put this um, this expression that is x minus mu x square fx dx which is coming so this a square is coming out and the other expectation so this uh, this b b uh, a gets cancelled and this expectation of a uh, mu x this is becoming 
uh, this is also becoming uh, so this a so that x minus mu x we are just taking a a common so x minus mu x will come here which is the square this square is coming here so a when we are taking out obviously the a square is coming out of this expectation so now if we express these terms then now we know that this is the second order moment for the random variable x with respect to its mean so which is nothing but the variance so the variance of y is equals to a square variance of x so if we just summarize in two things that is if the linear function is y equals to ax plus b then the expectation of y is equals to a multiplied by expectation of x plus b and variance of y is equals to a square variance of a square multiplied by variance of x so what we can see is that for the expectation this constant term is getting added and the constant term is getting multiplied whatever it is in the functional form and for the variance we know that for the constant variance is 0 so this is becoming 0 and whatever the scalar quantity that is multiplied to, to the random variable that becomes square multiplied to this uh, variance of the x now uh, one more thing which is also important for the this is the taylor series expansion of a function of this gx now gx is the y now the function of gx can can also be expanded in a taylor series about the mean value uh, of mu x now you from you know from this taylor series expansion that is y can be expressed that this functional value at gx so we are expanding it about the mean value mu x which is equals to that g mu x plus x minus mu x multiplied by this first derivative of this of this function with respect to x plus half x minus mu x square second derivative of this one plus it will go up to infinity now where the derivatives are evaluated so these all derivatives are evaluated at mu x that is the mean value of this uh, random variable x now if the series is truncated at the linear terms then the first order approximate mean and the variance of the y can be obtained as that expectation of y is equals to function of the same functional form at evaluated at mu x so this can be approximated just considering the linear terms so which also we, we can we can say we can show that for this linear function which is exactly same so here that when we are taking the expectation of this y which is equals to now what we are taking that this functional form at mu x so which is nothing but a multiplied by mu x plus b which is shown here so a multiplied by mu x plus b similarly if we take the variance of this the variance of y is can be approximated that variance of x minus mu x multiplied by uh, first derivative whole square so this is now the variance of x this d g dx is, uh, of, of that square now so if we take the first derivative of that functional form that square multiplied by the variance of x so for the linear function just now what we discuss is that is the same since the variance of y is equals to if we take the first derivative of this one that d dg dx then it will become a so that a square so that a square multiplied by the variance of x so which is nothing but a square variance of x which uh, we have also seen if the function of uh, if from the taylor series expansion and approximating up to the linear function note that if the function gx is approximately linear for the entire range of the value of the x then the above two equations will yield good approximation of the exact moments so so whatever the for the linear function that we have shown that we have seen that this is exactly same when we are taking the uh, taylor series expansion up to the linear uh, up to the um, that up to the linear order so excluding the higher order now this kind of uh, functional relationship if we say that over the entire range of that function if we can show that that is almost linear uh, if it is not perfectly linear if it even though it is almost linear over the range then also we can follow this kind of relationship 
to get a good approximation of this mean and uh, mean and uh, variance so this is what is 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 explained uh, in this uh, this one so just approximate the approximate linear functions also can yield the good approximation of the exact moments see one problem how we can solve this one let us take that this problem is related to the measuring the length of uh, two rods uh, what we can do is that we can uh, do uh, we can use two separate methods to measure the length one is that uh, two rods can be measured uh, separately and uh, what we can do is that we can uh, make the summation of the length of two rods and the difference of the length of two rods and after that we can do for this measurement so what we have to do the problem here is that uh, which method will be more uh, correct that we have to see now suppose that uh, there are two such uh, measurements one is that is denoted by m1 and other one is denoted by m2 and there the true lengths are represented by this t1 and this uh, t2 so obviously these measurements are supposed to um, some errors and that is why it is expressed as this t1 is equals to your m1 plus that epsilon 1 which is the error similarly it is m2 plus epsilon 2 now these are some say uh, these are having some um, properties statistical properties and which is having some uh, variance and these variance are say that uh, sigma square then if i want to know what is the uh, what is the variance of their uh, of their actual uh, of their true uh, length that the what we just get this 1 t1 and t2 then we can calculate that this variance that t1 is equals to that variance of m1 plus epsilon 1 which we can you know from our previous lecture that it is variance of m1 plus variance of epsilon 1 so which obviously this is a measurement so this uh, this, is a, this is a specific value so the variance is 0 and this variance as you told it is sigma square which is equal to your sigma square similarly if we calculate the variance of this t2 the second uh, uh, measurement that is uh, the true length of the second rod which is also following the same thing it will be also the uh, that uh, sigma square now in the second case when we are uh, measuring that combined length and this uh, difference length if we just measure and say that those are the m3 is the summation of the of, of those two lengths and m4 is the difference of these two lengths then we can express that this in the t1 the actual length of this first one plus t2 is equals to your whatever we have measured that m3 plus that epsilon um, 3 and that t1 minus t2 should be equals to as this that m4 plus epsilon 4 now if we now want to know what is the variance involved in this in this one then we have to express this t1 t2 in terms of their me measurement and from this two equation if we just solve for this uh, t1 and t2 you can do it that you will get that t1 is equals to your m3 plus m4 by 2 plus epsilon 3 plus epsilon 4 by 2 and sorry this is t1 and that t2 is equals to m3 minus m4 divided by 2 plus epsilon 3 minus epsilon 4 by 2 now we have to see what is the variance of this t1 and t2 now if we again follow the same and uh, this variance then this variance of t1 will be equals to the variance of m3 plus m4 divided by 2 plus epsilon 3 plus epsilon 4 by 2 which is equals to your variance of m3 plus m4 divided by 2 plus 
variance of epsilon 3 plus epsilon 4 by 2. Now, obviously, these are the specific values of the me measurement and this will again following the same earlier uh, logic, this will be 0 plus this variance as you know that now this is a epsilon 3 is a coefficient having half and epsilon 4 is also having half and you know that when we take it out it is a, it is a square that we have discussed in previous lecture. So, it will be the 1 by 4 of the variance of epsilon 3 plus variance of epsilon 4 which is equals to 4 plus this variance are same as we have told that this measurement is having a variance of sigma square. So, it is sigma square plus sigma square which gives you that sigma square by 2. Similarly, if we calculate that variance of T2 which will again come as the variance of this m3 minus m4 by 2 plus variance of epsilon 3 minus epsilon 4 by 2. Now, again this will be 0 plus this will be that coefficient here is half which is that 1 by 4 variance of epsilon 3 and this coefficient is minus half. So, square of that half again that 1 by 4 it is not that minus half it is not that uh, minus will not come this is square of the coefficient. So, the minus half square is 1 by 4 variance of epsilon 4 which is again that 1 by 4 sigma square plus sigma square which is sigma square by 2. So, what we have seen that in that uh, earlier case when we are measuring this two individually, we are getting that va variance of um, that thing is coming as sigma square and in the second case it is coming to be that sigma square by 2. So, that measurement accuracy of this uh, of the second me method is uh, better uh, than compared to this first method. So, in this example also we have seen that how we are uh, when we are interested for a new derived variable we can calculate their statistics even without knowing their uh, specific probabilistic uh, that probability distribution. So, uh, this one uh, uh, what is essential that is that after we got the derived random variable to calculate the properties of those derived random variables. So, we will take up some more example related to this line in the coming lecture. Thank you.